by the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to configure child routes. You're going to know how to define paths relative to the current path or the route of the application. And you're also going to know how to get access to the parent parameterized root parameters. So the goal for this lecture is to change our iTunes search application so that when we click on a search result, we are taken to an artist page. So this right now is the completed application running in the left hand side. Our goal is that when we click on a search result, we are taken to an artist page. And the artist page has two other sub menu items, one called tracks and one called albums. And by clicking on tracks, we're showing a list of all of the tracks for this artist. And when we click on albums, we're showing a list of all of the albums for this artist. Now, right now in front of you, you're seeing an application called Postman and Postman is just something that I use to make requests to APIs. It's just a helper utility that you can install on your computer. It's called Postman. Now we can get information about an artist using the iTunes API by passing in the ID of the artist. So this is the first part of this URL is the API that we've been using so far. And then we can also pass in an ID. And this will then result in some data about a particular artist. We can then additionally get a list of tracks for that artist by passing in entity is equal to song. This is now a list of tracks. And by passing in entity is equal to album, we can then get a list of albums. And this concept that I'm showing you, this concept of having two sets of menu items, a top level between home and search, and then within search, another level in an artist between tracks and albums. This is called nested routing, and it's the topic of this lecture. Now we're building on the same application that we've been working with so far, but I've added three new components to our application. So I've added artist component, which just shows a H1 tag with artist and has a select of app artist. Track listing, which just shows the text track listing and has the selector app artist track list. And we've got artist album list component, which just shows the text artist album listing and has, a, has the selector app artist album list. And I've also added all three of these to our ng module declarations. Okay, so to begin with, we need another route for our artist component. And we want to pass to this component an artist ID. So it needs to be a parameterized route. And the artist ID is mandatory. So we're not using optional parameters. So I add in another route. The path is artist slash and then colon artist ID because that is our parameterized route variable. And the component I want to show when someone hits that URL is the artist component. And in our search results, I want to add a router link directive to the result item. So it navigates to our new artist page. So the search results are up here. This is an individual search result item. Right now it has a href, which just goes to the a blank hash. I'm going to get rid of the href. And I'm adding in a router link directive and I'm passing to the router link directive a link params array. Now the first part of the link params array is the text artist. And the second index in the link params array is going to be the artist ID. Now we're already parsing the artist ID in the search item object. So if you remember from the top, our search item has an artist ID, which are already parsing in from the iTunes search service. And so we can access that from 
our template with just track artist ID. So now our router link directive is being passed the string artist and then the variable track artist ID. So let's see if this works. So now if I search for the term love, you can see it returns results and also the URL changes to semicolon term is equal to love because we're using optional parameters and therefore that's using the matrix URL notation. Now if I click on the first item, something strange happens. We're just shown the home page. Now if I go to the URL, you can see what's happening is that we're seeing slash search and then we're seeing our matrix URL notation for our search term. And then we're seeing slash artist and then the artist ID. It just looks to be a concatenation between the artist URL and the search URL. And that's happening because when we navigated to the artist URL, we did so relative to the current URL. And the current URL at that time was just the search URL. What we want to do is to navigate relative to the root of our application, relative to this. And to do that, we need to prepend the forward slash to our path. So where we wrote artist as the first part of our path, I'm gonna prepend it with forward slash and this tells Angular that we want the path to start from the root of our application. So now if I go back to search, let me refresh the page. Let me search for love. And now when I click on the first item, we are navigated to the artist page because we explicitly said that we want to navigate from the root of our application. So if we don't provide a slash, it assumes that we want to navigate relative to the current URL. We can also be explicit about navigating relative to the current URL by using dot slash. That means relative to the current URL, add this new URL. Or we can be explicit and say we want to navigate from the root by prepending with slash. Okay. So when the artist page is shown, we want there to be two menu options, one called tracks and the other one called album. So showing you the finished application again, on the artist page here, we have tracks and albums, two menu items. And in our application that we're building up, we just have the text artist. And when the user clicks on tracks underneath it, I want to show a list of all of the tracks this artist has released. And if the user clicks on albums, then I want to show a list of the albums they have released. That's me explaining that in terms a human can understand, but explaining it in terms that the router understands is inside the artist component, I want to conditionally show either the artist album list component or the artist track list component, depending on which menu item the user has selected. So to solve this, let me first define the root configuration. Each root can have a property called children where you can define the child roots of this root. And I'm going to add my roots for the artist album list component and the artist track list component in our root configuration. You scroll down to it. So for our artist root, I've added a property called children and that holds an array an array that's going to hold other child roots. So our first root is a redirect. We don't really want to support if a user actually goes to a URL like what we see right now. This doesn't really tell the browser whether or not it should be showing the tracks view or the albums view. So if we go to a blank URL, I want to redirect to the tracks URL so that we show at least something, we show the tracks or, or the albums. Then our next route is the tracks route. And when we see the tracks route, I wanna show the artist track list component. 
and our final child root is the albums root and when that is shown we show the artist album list component so now i can add the menu items to my artist template so if i scroll back up this is my artist template and this is the screen that you're seeing on the right hand side underneath there i put two anchor tags one for tracks and one for albums so an important thing to note is the link params array for tracks and albums it doesn't start with the forward slash that's because i want to navigate relative to the current url so if i navigate to tracks and i'm on this url it will navigate to that url slash tracks and alternatively if I, if I click on albums it will navigate to albums now again like before i can be explicit with the fact that I want to root relative to the, to the current URL by doing dot forward slash. So let's do that as well. And the final thing we need to do is to tell Angular where we want the artist track list component and the artist album list components to be injected into the page. And we do that by adding another router outlet directive. So I actually want those components and those lists to be shown underneath this header section in the artist page. So now we have two router outlets in our application. We have the main one in our app component, and this is where the artist page is going to be, the artist component is rendered. And then within the artist component, we have another router outlet and within that router outlet, we're gonna show either the artist track list component or the artist album list component. And Angular figures out which router outlet to inject which component by the nesting level of the root and the router outlet. So now if I rerun the application, we're already on the artist tracks page. We're now seeing the tracks and artist menu item this underneath it is the artist track listing component. So now if I click on albums, we now see the artist album listing component. And if I see the URL, the URL changes to albums. But just like before, we can still navigate through the rest of our application as well. So that takes us home, search, click on love, click search, click on this guy. And then we can see by default, we get taken to the tracks page because we redirect to tracks and then we can flip between tracks and albums, and again, just go back to where we were. So to query the list of tracks for an artist from the iTunes API, the artist track list component needs the artist ID. So going back into our root configuration, if we look at the root configuration for our artist track list component, it's this one here. But this, root doesn't have the variable artist id it's the parent of this root which has the artist id variable okay so let's try seeing if this works let's try and inject the activated root into our child artist track list component and print out the parameters that get returned so on this component i add a constructor I inject activated root. I then subscribe to the parameters and I'm just going to print them out to the console. So now if I inspect, open the console here, let's clear it, refresh. So now if I click on search for love and then by clicking on an artist, it's going to render the artist track list component, and I'm going to expect the parameters to be printed to the console. Okay, so something did get printed to the console, it's actually the empty object. Now the reason for this is that activated root only passes you the parameters for the current component's root. And since the root for artist track list component doesn't have any root parameters, any parameterized variables it's actually getting passed nothing 
What we want is we want to get the params for the parent root. And that's fine. We can achieve this by calling parent on our activated root parameters. So if we scroll back up here, where it says params, I want to get root.parent.params. So now if I refresh the page, you can see now we are on the artist tracks page and we're getting printed the artist ID. So to summarize, we can nest roots and this means for a given URL, we can render a tree of components. And we do this by using multiple router outlet directives and configuring child roots on our root configuration objects. Next up, we're going to learn about protecting access to different routes via the use of router guards. Now, just a quick note, the application we just wrote in this lecture is complete in terms of child routing, but still needs rounding out in terms of making the other API requests for tracks and albums and printing up the template HTML. Now, you won't learn anything else about routing from me going through the process of finishing off the app, but for your interest, the full listing is available by going to the resources section or by looking at the bottom of the page if you're viewing this video on the Codecraft TV site. And just another note, as with all of our examples, they are for illustrative purposes only. When you're building your own production application, please follow the official style guides. We should really be putting every component in a separate file and our HTTP request should all be wrapped in a separate service.